Hello YouTube, welcome back. Got another build and another giveaway for you. As you probably guessed, I am making a drunken octopus coat hanger. It's one of those things that once you see them, you can't unsee them. So stick around and find out how this could be yours. Like many a woodworker, I have lots of unused project stuff save for that, oh, I'll use it sometime, someday. Notice the dust on my someday box. But I did finally get there. So I got some two different types of hangers and I was gonna be making two to begin with. I'm using Ambrosia Maple, also known as Wormy Maple. Got a couple pieces uh, left over from the dining table I made a while back. So time to mill those up. And we're going to start with the jointer. This tool is for flattening wood. It gives you two faces, a face and an edge at 90 degrees to each other. When you get uh, rough sawn lumber, Generally, it's not flat or square. Um, and even when you mill lumber, which is what we're doing here, um, it can warp over time. Um, so even if it was, you know, perfectly square and it was, you know, an inch thick by three inches wide and everything was great. If the board sits in a position it's not supposed to, it can change. So you have to continuously mill stuff to make sure everything is square and Good to go. You'll see on this next pass, it gets hollow in the center. Listen. So this board has a slight crook in it. Now take the second pass. Nice and clean all the way through. What it missed the first time was a little bit of gap in, in the board. Um, so what we were looking for was that consistent cut all the way through. That means that a, the blade is making contact with the wood all the way along the surface and it's going to be totally flat. Next we move to the planer. So we have one surface, we'll call it the bottom, that's totally flat. And we'll run it through this and it will make the uh, top side coplanar to the bottom. So it makes it the same thickness and flat across the top. All right, so I've done two edges on the jointer a face and an edge, and then I ran it through the planer to do the other face, and now I'm going to rip it to its final width. And then my table saw died. And I had to stop what I was doing. It took me about 20 minutes to fix it. I was a little bummed out that I was able to fix it because, you know, you break a tool, you get to buy a new one. But it's probably for the best that it continues to work because table saws are expensive and one day I'll replace it. So here, because the board is different widths at each end, I'm checking both ends to make sure that it's going to cut. That's why I'm flipping the board over. If you haven't noticed already, my wa uh, washer and dryer are also in the wood shop. So nice background noises for you guys. So now I've got my pieces and I'm doing some testing, some layout to see how I want to use each board and hangers I've got. Um, 
This piece here, what I'm working on right now, kind of gave me some trouble in that it was a little thin to use the hangers in the other direction. It kind of looked weird. And this was a piece that had a big knot hole in the center. I just wasn't entirely sure what to do with it. So I ended up going a very different route and doing what any normal person would do. Um, and I smashed it on the ground and broke it. I ended up uh, doing some um, power carving, some wood burning, and some other stuff to create kind of a neat little shelf. Um, and I will be making another video to pick up from this point uh, for you guys to see the process on the making of that one. It actually turned out pretty neat. It's one of the things I like about some of the work that I do is sometimes I just experiment with something and I'm like, well, how much worse can it get? And sometimes it turns out, sometimes it doesn't. So right now, uh, the piece that is um, was a little thick for its intended purpose as a coat hanger. So I took it to the bandsaw. I'm ripping off a good half inch. Then I can save that piece for later because, you know, that's what we do. We save everything. I just got this thing installed like a week ago. It's been sitting in my garage for a month. And I'm so happy to have it now. And every woodworker's favorite time is sanding time. Now, I always like to mark my boards with pencil, and this serves two purposes. It ensures that you are standing deep enough and evenly. So you want to make sure that you remove all the pencil marks as you are progressing through your sandpaper. Um, and you can, you know, scribble each time that you uh, change your grit. But the other part is, and I think it's the one that gets passed up more often um, or overlooked, is that wood can be denser in different parts of the same board. You might have a spot that's really soft on one end and really hard on the other, and it's a lot harder to sand through um, denser wood than it is softer wood. So it ensures that you are sanding evenly because you have a point of reference, which is the uh, pencil mark being erased by the sandpaper. If you were doing it without that, there are chances that you can uh, dip or hollow out spots. Um, it's just good practice. It's not necessarily something you have to do, but it, it's one of those things you do to kind of go the distance. And I'm just using a... a router trim router here to give a nice chamfer on the edge gives a profile to the piece makes it less boring so what i did right there is called climb cutting so as you can see the the uh cutter on the piece is spinning clockwise which is why I'm running the router from right to left. It goes into the board with the cut. And as I go around the edge there, if I didn't climb cut on that corner, because the way it's spinning, which is clockwise, as it approaches that inside corner to what we can see, it'll cause the wood to tear out or blow out of the end and that could cause damage. So you climb cut and then move it back around. I'll explain it later in more detail. So now I'm just trying to figure out my layout, doing some measuring. I originally broke down into thirds and then realized it looked funny, so I moved it over on the outside a little more and got everything lined up. And I was gonna do them straight, and then I realized, well, you know what, this is, this is a drunken octopus. This is an octopus that wants to fight. Look at him get his dukes up. So, crooked became the better answer. So that's what I ran with. Now this is a center finding drill bit. And I'm drilling just a little bit, 
not that deep so that the screws have something to bite into. Erase the pencil marks, come back, give it a nice one over real quick. I didn't really like the way that the uh, trim router had cleaned up the edges, so I ran it again. Um, and there was still a spot where it had a little divot, so decided to just grab the, the sander and, and run it along the profiles. Being really careful not to round over any because... Sanding at an angle like that, it's hard to maintain a perfectly even pressure, so it can it can very quickly round over your edge, and you can lose that crisp line. But it turned out all right. Next, it was time to start finishing. Get some gloves on, grab a cup, some uh, rags, clean everything up with. Cut them up into small pieces so I don't have to use the whole thing and waste it. Go grab my big old container of boiled linseed oil. So in when finishing, it's always best to finish the back side first. Um, even though this side wouldn't be seen because it's going to be against the wall, it's still a good idea of uh, applying at least one coat of whatever you're finishing with. It ensures that the wood is sealed up on all sides, that it doesn't absorb moisture um, from one area more than the other, which can cause uh, more problems. Less so on smaller pieces like this, but like if you had a large tabletop and you didn't finish the underside, you can cause um, serious warping. So I always apply at least one coat of whatever I'm using to the entire piece. And this is just boiled linseed oil. You put it on, you let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, you wipe it off, let it cure for a day or two, depending on temperature and everything else. These uh, little pieces let you set down your work with minimal contact on the piece. Raise it up off the table. Oil linseed oils is one of my favorite ones to use when I really want um, the wood to pop. It's, it's a, a way of saying like the grain, the texture, the the way it looks is really brought out by uh, this material, and it always gives it a really nice look when that effect is desired. Here it is, all oiled up. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Um, if you're interested in getting your hands on this, uh, make sure that you are subscribed, hit that like button, leave a comment. Um, for this video, if I can get it to 500 likes before the end of the year, shipping will be free to you. Um, otherwise, when I select someone, I will ask if you are willing to pay for shipping, just because I need to start not throwing all my money away entirely. Um, I'm not looking to make a profit, I'm just, I will charge you exactly what it costs to ship it to you. Um, this particular piece doesn't have a way to anchor to the wall at the moment. The reason being is in your house, you may have a, a different stud layout in your wall. You may want to attach it in a different way. There's a lot of options. You can buy the hidden ones that you drill into the back, screw them in and it hangs on the wall, or you could just put two screws. Uh, this is big enough that you could do 16 on center or 24 on center, depending on the way your wall is going. Um, 
My other giveaway videos are still going on. The coffee table is still available. You've got till December 15th for that one. The Batman and Superman one are still going on. I've got five of those that I'm giving away, so make sure that you check that out. Uh, suggest a project. I'm still looking for some ideas. There's a lot of people, there's only a handful of ideas on there right now. So um, make sure that you check that video out and leave a comment. And if you get selected, your project will be made and sent to you. I've got a couple more projects coming up. These are gonna be two coffee tables, one for me and one for you that I'm building. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed, hit that notification bell, hit that like button. You know, let YouTube know that you want me to keep making stuff and sending it to you guys. So I'll see you on the next one.